Welcome to Unite Now, where we bring unity to you, wherever you are. All right. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well. We have a ginormous amount of information to cover today, um, including your homework. Yep. So uh, we're looking forward to that. I did get on, I don't know about you, Lexi, but I did get on uh, the submissions and yeah. a lot of them were, were pretty amazing. Yeah, we had almost 50 submissions, which is incredible. So everybody who submitted, thank you so much for doing that and letting us see the work that you did. Uh, you know, people had really creative, really great solutions to this uh, question of how to build this function. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to go over two very simple, very basic versions of the function starting off. Uh, but before we do that, let's get some housekeeping. Oh, is uh, there? All right. Oh, there so, is. Um, I don't know if anybody got this, but uh, what is the least favorite RPG mechanic? While we're going yeah. through this, maybe you guys can type it in. Uh, Alexia and I were just talking about dialogue trees. Whew. <laughs> Having to read too much. <laughs> so um, uh, my name is uh, Brian Kenny. Um, I'm a Unity certified instructor. Along with me is Alexi Elson and Gerard. We are here to uh, take you through the Create with Code. Uh, did I say I said that wrong? Beginner. Uh, uh, yeah, this is the this is our <laughs> our action uh, RPG uh, with yes, C thank sharp. You. Yeah. Holy cow! Um, and please, if anybody uh, needs help. Um, you know, you can reach us on our Twitter. Uh, I usually get back to people right away when that happens. So if you need help, reach out to us. Amazing. Uh, we have along with us today uh, some amazing uh, other UCIs, Unity Certified Instructors. Uh, we have Alejandro, Mayor, and James. Uh, they are going to be available in the chat to answer all of your questions. Um, and uh, they are very talented individuals. Uh, and... Uh, uh, pretty handsome too. So make sure you uh, hit them up uh, if you got any uh, technical questions. Yeah. So we like. Uh, to, oh, I'm sorry, no. I forgot, David. And we Nathan even have more. Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> so uh, this is just a quick, uh, like Alexi said, quick uh, housekeeping items uh, and some announcements that we're gonna make, uh, and then we're gonna get uh, right dive right in it. So um, you does uh, encourage you to uh, participate um, with a watch, do, and then explore. Like we already talked about it. The exploring was amazing that people did uh, outside of the scope of your homework assignment. So that was pretty amazing. We have people using arrays, uh, different types of ways uh, to function. Uh, so it was awesome, but make sure uh, that you are watching first, then you are doing, and then once you get your homework assignment, you can go out and explore. Uh, your Id ideal Zoom layout is have uh, whatever Alexi is going over uh, in your background, and then position your video uh, on, the, uh, on the top, and then uh, your chat. Uh, the chat is going to be for general comments, uh, but like I said before, Q&A all your technical questions. We have those awesome moderators that are in there uh, ready to help you uh, as soon as possible. Uh, so uh, some ground rules. Um, if you need to catch up, all of these are posted on the Unity Learn Live site. Uh, so make sure that you are um, uh, watching those. You don't necessarily have to be, uh, if this is your first time, that's perfect. Uh, because you can always go uh, back and catch up. You can watch, uh, maybe participate a little bit, uh, and then go back and catch up. Uh, like I said before, technical questions go in the Q&A, and uh, general, questions, general comments go in the, uh, the chat. And uh, just be ready to follow along. There's the uh, bit.ly link for all of the assets that you can download uh, for this project. And uh, just keep in mind that um, the moderators are actively watching the chat. Uh, the word of the day is respect. So please uh, respect them. They're talented individuals, and they will get to you uh, and your questions as soon as possible. So, um, boy, Alexi, that was fast. I'm glad. Yeah, that was fast. I hope, everybody, I hope I didn't go too fast, but hope uh, 
Uh, you all have a good time. Let's get started with this. Yeah. Um, uh, let's I want, dive right in. Yeah, let's go for it. Um, I want to uh, kind of follow up on what Brian said. Um, again, we are going to go very quickly through this stuff. There's, we have a lot to cover. Um, so if you find that you've gotten lost or you've fallen behind, you know, definitely just keep up as best you can and then go back and watch the session over um, so you can follow along kind of at your own pace. Um, we will be moving pretty quickly. So, you know, if, if let me know in the chat if you feel like, whoa, this is really too fast. We need you to slow down. Um, but I'm also, I'm, we're really going to try to get through uh, reviewing the homework and creating some new game features. And both of those new game features are like pretty complex in terms of the number of steps that you're going to need to do. So, um, so yeah, please let us know. Uh, with that, somebody asked, are we going to get specific uh, feedback on the homework? Um, we've looked at a bunch of the homework submissions. I'm going to be going over kind of two different uh, basic uh, solutions to the homework. We're not going to give individualized feedback on the homework. We just don't have the time. I apologize. Uh, but you will get to see kind of like, again, two basic functions. So especially if, um, uh, if you felt like you, were, you wrote the function, but you weren't 100% certain if you did it right, um, that's going to be, you know, uh, the review is going to be good for you for that. Uh, should we move? Let's uh, let's go ahead and move forward, Brian. Let's see Perfect. Our... Oh, yeah. geez. Uh, so we're yeah. go, what we're going to do is, uh, oh, well, you already covered that. I got you, yeah. Going. All right, there yeah. you go. So <laughs> um, in terms of reviewing the function, so when, you know, one thing that I really wanted to draw people's attention to, again, for especially for people who sort of haven't, uh, haven't done a lot of code who are really new to C Sharp. The thing that I wanted to draw your attention to here was when you look at the way that this is, um, the way that this is written, the, the function that's on screen now, or the, the start function that's on screen now, one of the things that you see that should start to jump out at you immediately is you have kind of these, these instructions, these three lines of instructions that are repeated three times. Um, so when we said like, oh, write a function that that sort of takes all of those and lets you just repeat the function, that's kind of what we're talking about. It's this idea that rather than writing each instruction out over and over three times, uh, we can instead write a function that encapsulates those instructions once, and then we can just call that function multiple times and have the function run those instructions. So in other words, when we when we call a function, what we're saying is, hey, here's a bundle of code. We're giving it a name. And when we call that name, execute that bundle of code. Um, so you know, here we have each, again, in, in line 15, 16, 17, line 20, 21, 22, and line 25, 26, 27, all of those basically repeat the same set of instructions over and over again. We have vector three direction. So we're making a new variable called direction. We set it equal to a specific angle. Um, then we take a we make a, a spawn position, or we actually update the spawn position variable. Uh, we make that equal to a position plus a direction times a radius. Um, and then finally, that last instruction on, for example, line 17 is instantiate object to spawn at spawn position with quaternion dot identity. And for people who aren't super familiar with that instantiate function, instantiate is one of the basic features of Unity. It's a super useful function, and it just means create a game object. It means take, the, take a game object that we've already specified, so <clears throat> the object that we have connected to the object to spawn variable, and put one on screen. And instantiate, we need two, three uh, arguments for the instantiate function. The first one is, what are we spawning? The second one is, where are we spawning? And the third one is, where is it pointing, right? What's its rotation? So that instantiate function in line 17, you can see, basically we're saying, okay, run the instantiate function. And then we, we give it three pieces of information. Object to spawn, that's where it's going to spawn. Spawn position, which is the variable that we created in the, in the immediately previous line, right, which defines a position on screen. And then quaternion.identity, which basically says, 
uh, quaternion is a way to describe rotation, so it's where an object is pointing in space. Quaternion.identity says point this in the same direction as its parent object, right? Just make it uh, make it have its own, uh, basically like point it in its own direction, or, or you know, don't change the direction that it's facing when it spawns from the parent object. Okay, so uh, I want to show you guys a. Uh, so again, this is this is our uh, basic. This is the the spawner sample script, right? We haven't changed the script. We have we're building the angle. We're building a few variables: angle, radius, spawn position, and then we give these instructions three times. Each time, you'll notice we change this angle variable. Before we give those three instructions, we have to change that angle variable each time because we want the, the potions, we don't want all the potions to all stack in the same place. We don't want them to all appear in the same spot. We want to move them. So we use that angle variable to say, okay, make this one here and then rotate around a circle and make the next one a little bit further down and then rotate around a circle, make the next one a little bit further over. Um, so we need to keep two things in mind. One, we need to collapse these three function calls into one function that we can, or three instructions, three sets of instructions, sorry, into one function that we can call over and over again. And two, we need to figure out a way to update that angle each time. Because again, when we think about a function, every time we call a function, that function is going to run exactly the same way. If we don't update angle, if we call that function multiple times, each time we call the function, it's just going to put a health potion in the same place on screen. We need to change the position of that health potion if we're going to actually like show the player multiple health potions on screen at once. So I want to show you guys, this is my sort of, I tried to come up with the absolute simplest solution that I could. Uh, you know, uh, people who wrote in their um uh people who wrote in their uh people who wrote their homework and submitted it we saw a lot of really great really creative solutions using arrays using you know a bunch of different methods to change that angle um but right now uh, again i want to show you guys like the, the simplest solution that i can come up with um, so right. there's a lot of different way to do things in code. That's what I love about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so here is my solution number one, right? Um, so what you can see here is I have this, this is my spawner function. Um, it has the type void because, uh, we are, this spawner function isn't going to return a value. I'm not expecting to get data back out of it. It's just going to do a thing. So it has type void. It's called spawner. And you'll notice that my start function is now much simpler, right? In start, I just call spawner four times. Inside of spawner, all of the same instructions that we had in the previous, uh, in the previous version of the script, those are all still here. We create a spawn position variable. We create a direction variable. We use this angle. We're still using that angle variable, right? We, we, uh, we update that spawn position variable. And then we do the same instantiate. Instantiate object to spawn at spawn position with quaternion.identity rotation. Um, and then the last thing that, that I did uh, was I had in the spawner function, I had it update this angle variable. So each time I call spawner, angle is going to update to be equal to its current value plus 40. Um, and this is a really common pattern that you'll see, angle equals angle plus 40, or variable equals variable plus something, or minus something, or times something. And that's an update function that lets us very quickly and easily uh, um, basically like uh, very quickly and easily increase or decrease or change the value of a variable and then save that new variable inside, uh, overwrite basically the variable with its new value. So every time I call spawner here, my angle is going to increase by 40. Now, for people who are paying attention at home, you will realize 
that this is not a great solution if I plan on calling Spawner in more than like nine times, right? Because if I call Spawner nine times, I will go 360 degrees around a circle and wind up back where I started. And then if I want to call, if I want to keep calling Spawner, I'm going to be putting health potions back over where I already have health potions on screen. So this is maybe not the best solution, but it is a very simple solution. And one thing that I really wanted to, um, uh, one thing that I wanted to, uh, someone had a really good question in the, um, in the chat that I'm going to get to in just a second. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out is this angle variable can be changed from inside the spawner function. Um, so so I, I wanted to note that like we are kind of the spawner function is reaching outside of itself to that angle variable, which is which is available because it's in this same script. Um, and it's changing that angle variable every time I call spawner. Somebody had a really good question. Uh, Brett Rohde asks, in spawner solution one, given that void start portion calls for spawner before we define the, the, the function, if the code runs line by line, why do we not define spawner first? So this is a little bit of a, um, there's, there's two things here. Code does absolutely run line by line, but certain parts of code actually run at different times. And that start function specifically doesn't run until the object is instantiated. So a way to think about it is when I write this code, uh, actually, if you played around with, with writing these scripts, one of the things you'll notice is, you know, you'll write something, save it, and then go back to Unity. And Unity takes a minute to kind of, uh, to, to crunch, right? It takes a minute to, uh, you know, you'll get usually a little like like waiting icon as Unity runs through your script, and then it'll update. What it's doing in that moment is actually compiling your script, so it's running your script from top to bottom to make sure that it um, that it is compilable, that it's going to run. If you have errors, that's the moment where Unity's like, "Oh, I can't run this. You have a console error, and you need to fix something in your script." In that right, moment, when it go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I just want to point out that. You know, Unity has certain functions like the start function that are already they Unity already knows that the start function is going to run once at right. when you start your code. And there's a whole hierarchy of there's the awake function, there's the update function, there's all these functions that Unity already knows when and where to run them. So when you run the spawner uh, function, it will uh, you know Unity already knows. Hey, start! I'm going to run at when I hit play. Uh, spawner is going to run four times. Yeah. So in other words, <laughs> what what's happening here is actually like when I write the script and save it and then go back to Unity, Unity is compiling that script at that moment and functions that are written in that script will be compiled and then the script checks to make sure, oh, are these function calls that are in the script, are they referencing a function that has been described already. That start function, we think of that as being like, oh, it's the first thing that happens in the script, but it's really not. Start only runs when an object gets instantiated. So it's sort of like fairly late in Unity's process. Um, in other words, Unity reads this whole script before I've even pressed the start button, sees that I've defined a, a script here, a function here, and says, okay, you know, great. When I start the, when I run my start function, I already know what spawner means, um, right? Function definitions can actually go kind of anywhere in your uh, in your code, as long as they are outside of anywhere in your main uh, thread, as long as they're outside of like a start menu or a start function or an update function. Right, you need to be careful if they're in. If you put your spawner code in start, it won't run until start happens. Um, okay. Uh, somebody notes, isn't it bad practice to include hard coded numbers uh, in your functions? Uh, for example, forty in spawner would be very better as a variable. That is absolutely true. Uh, this is a you know I, again. Um, you know, in in a in a sort of 
more uh, complete solution, I would really want to, I'd call this probably starting angle uh, and then have this be, uh, you know, be, this 40 would be a different variable. Um, okay, so that's solution one. Uh, I want to show you guys solution two, which is a little bit different. And again, it's very simple, but it gets at uh, an important structural part of how functions work that I wanted to um, that I wanted to point out. So this is function two. You'll notice here when I create my spawner function, I'm giving it an argument. So I'm telling spawner, hey, when I call you, I'm going to pass you some information, and this this integer spawn angle says, okay, I'm going to give you an angle when I call this function. And you'll see the rest of the function is written basically exactly the same, except I take out that angle equals angle plus 40. I'm no longer changing the, the angle variable. I actually got rid of the angle variable entirely, which yes, it's bad practice. It should be a variable. But um, to, to show you guys what I'm doing, I got rid of that angle variable entirely. Instead, now when I call spawner, uh, I'm going to pass it the angle variable. I'm going to pass it the like hard-coded angle number that I want it to spawn at. And you can see where I'm calling it. So in spawner solution one, I just said call spawner. In spawner solution two, I have to pass some number, some integer specifically, right? Because that's what the function is yep. expecting. I have to pass an integer to the function in order to get it to work correctly. So here, what I'm saying is I'm calling spawner four times. The, functionally, these are exactly the same. Actually, I changed the, val the values a little bit so that uh, they would look different on screen so I could test it and make sure that the two functions were working correctly. But fundamentally, you know, I could put any integer in these numbers and they would, the, the function will run and place uh, a, um, you know, place a health potion uh, at that location. But rather than, again, rather than that problem of the spawner function itself keeps updating the angle variable, now I'm just going to pass the spawner function the angle that I want it to, to make a potion at. Uh, okay. Is that... Let's... I'm going to uh, go back to the... the um, Let's go back to the presentation really fast and give people a chance to, I guess, uh, hopefully finish writing their own little functions if they haven't done so yet. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna take the take a minute and answer some more questions. Um, why is spawn position initialized with transformed up position and then further replaced with transformed up position plus uh, direction times radius without ever using the initial assign? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think that the way, the reason that we do that is we need to give spawn position, we need to initialize spawn position um, with a reference to a transform before we want to uh, change that. Um, that value later. Um, that's a that's a good question. Somebody asks, which solution do you think works better? Um, I would say that in general, both both solutions have sort of like good and bad parts. I think the first solution is maybe a little bit more readable, um, but the second solution is probably a better long term uh, uh, solution because again, I can pass different angles um, into it. The I would say that neither solution is like production code because again both solutions rely on me um, on me uh, either knowing how many times I want to call spawner or um, or passing it a specific like a sort of magic number um, passing it the number that I want it to spawn at um, and the better answer would be to make a variable and adjust that variable based on where I wanted that that potion to spawn. A um, couple more questions. 
would it be better practice to call the function four times or make a function to call it all at once? I saw people use a for loop for this, which we haven't gotten into, but I really liked as a way to do that. So you write the function and then you use a for loop to call it multiple times. I think that's really readable. That's really um, clear. Uh, let's see. I think that's pretty... Um, I think that's pretty clear. There's definitely some, uh, yeah, some people people are using for loops, which is which is great. Okay, yes, I think that we should move forward. I know that there's a lot of questions about this stuff, um, and you know, I apologize that we don't have time to you know dig more deeply into it. Um, hey, but, we're gonna we are gonna stick around uh, a little yeah. bit at the end of the session, so. Yeah, we're going to stick um, around for a few minutes after the session. So if you have uh, if you have a lot of questions, uh, please hold off. Uh, let's yeah, let's move forward. So now that we've kind of seen how to build some simple functions, we're actually going to move forward and we're going to talk about how to build a usable item and a piece of equipment in the game. Um, so again, a little bit like the FPS Creator Kit, which we you know got into and we got into a few weeks ago. Uh, a lot of this stuff has been um, has been pre-built for us. So we're going to be building scripts on top of scaffolding and architecture that's already been put down for us, um, which is really exciting. Uh, so let's let's move forward. So we're going to actually create a new item in game, um, and what that's going to look like is we're going to be able to um, to actually like see what happens when we as designers build a new item and put it in play. Um, so the way we're going to do that, again, fortunately, a lot of this stuff is, is already created for us. Um, but what we're going to do is we want to go to this prefabs in-game item uh, folder. So this is a this is a folder that holds references to a lot of the in-game items. We're going to add items to it, um, and then by right-clicking, we can get the create menu, and you'll see up at the top of the create menu, there's actually a a, a new item that's been added to that menu for beginner code. So since this is the beginner code kit, all of that is unique to this project. It's all stuff that's been built specifically for this project, and here we can see that there are three different, uh, three different um, categories of things that we can create. Equipment items, usable items, and weapons. We're going to go over equipment items and usable items today. And specifically right now, we're going to talk about usable items. So go ahead and create a usable item. So now this is a usable item. So a usable item is like those health potions, are a good example of usable items. They're items that players can pick up and they use the item, the item has an effect. The effect is probably gonna be temporary just based on the design of the game, uh, and then the item goes away. So I built a speed potion uh, as, as an example object. So I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take you guys through that now. When we build a new item, you can see that, again, the editor creates, the editor has created some template objects uh, already. So I'm gonna call this usable item, right? Step one is always we wanna give it a, a good name. I have speed pot one, that's speed potion one, or speed pot, I'm gonna make speed pot two. But uh, please feel free to name this object whatever you want. And then, so this is how we're, this is the name of the object as Unity references it. This is the name of the object as it's going to be referenced in game. So let's call this hyper speed potion. I already have, over here, I already have speed potion, uh, as you can see. And over here, now I'm going to have uh, a hyper speed potion. My speed potion description is got to go fast for those Sonic fans. So my hyper speed potion is, of course, going to be uh, got to go really fast. Um, then this is the world object prefab. This is the, the, what that thing is going to look like in the world. This is the item sprite. Um, so the difference between the two of those, the item sprite, when that object is being displayed, we're displaying the sprite. When that object exists in the world, we're using the world object. Um, and I think, I, let's actually, um, I think this is as far as we want to go for now. 
give people a chance to um, to go ahead and, and catch up to us here. Uh, let's see. So let's have everybody like get up to that point. I'm just uh, I'm just trying to get back to the the uh, presentation. I can get it. There you go. Uh, okay, perfect. Oh, great, awesome. Yeah. So again, project window. We're gonna go in the assets creator kit beginner code prefab in-game items. So that's that's you're looking for that in-game items folder, and then right click in the project window and select create beginner code usable items from the context menu. Give your item a good name. Uh, oh, nice. And James just put up the, yeah, that that list of, uh, like, um, that list of steps in the chat if you need a reminder. One of the nice things about this, so, you know, when we, when we create these new items, uh, we're going to show you how to create the items and then also how to write the scripts that describe the effects of the items uh, very briefly. Um, we won't dig too far into it, but there's a ton of documentation about this project, and I'll show you sort of like how to get into that documentation and how to um, how to look through it so that you can start using it to create your own items, more complex effects, et cetera, et cetera. Let's see. Does anyone have questions so far about creating items, et cetera, et cetera? I'm not seeing any in the chat right now. Uh, people are probably busy making their items. Uh, somebody asks, is the item that we just created a prefab? Yeah, it is. It, this is this is creating a prefab uh, for you automatically. Uh, somebody asks, do we make FPS tutorials? It's I tutorials. encourage you to go back <laughs> and see the uh, Create with Code at, or the, the uh, Beginner Series FPS tutorial that we did uh, over the course of three weeks uh, just a couple weeks ago. Um, okay. So let's, uh, let's really quickly, I want to see if there is... Uh, icons. Du, 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 du. Now I won't. I won't. I don't want to fuss with it right now. Um, so what we're going to do now? So again, uh, I would say if you have your, um, let's see. There we go. If you have your your potion, or if you have your item, because again. You might not be making a speed potion. You might be making something else. Um, if you have your item set up, I encourage you to, to see if you can hook up the world object prefab, um, which you can drag from actually inside this menu. Right, The potion prefab object is good, or the tonic prefab object. Both of those are, are kind of good. Um, they're good bets. Uh, I, didn't, I haven't gone through and hunted down the sprite, but I'm sure that there's a sprite prefab that you can drop into this item sprite uh, location as well. Um, for now, though, what we're going to do is we're going to move forward to show you how to create an item effect. Because basically, in this prefab, right, item sprite, item name, description, so what the item looks like, what the item is called, how the item is described, world object prefab, what the item will look like in game, and then this last one is add new effect. This actually shows us what effects we can make this um, this item have. So add health usage effect, increases the health, increase strength effect, increases the character strength, and then I made this speed up uh, um, script, which is what I'm going to show you how to do now, uh, and we're going to make a new one for, uh, for this hyperspeed potion. Um, and you know, once we've made those scripts, they'll appear here, and you can decide what effects your, your items will have. So uh, up here in beginner code, we're just going to go to create uh, item effect. And we want to name it. Uh, and we can call it um, super speed up. Um, again, because we're doing hyper potions. And then just click create. 
And it it puts the script inside this item effect uh, window already. So it's inside the item effect folder, excuse me, um, which is great because we can just double click it. Um, and this is, uh, hopefully it's sharing the correct screen. Um, probably not actually, yeah, there we go. Uh, hopefully everyone can see now, this is our item use template. This is what the item uh, looks like, what the item template looks like. So once you've created the item, uh, the item uh, effect script, this is what you should be looking at. Um, the name of your script, it already creates the script with the name that you've given that, um, that script, which is really nice. And we'll talk a little bit about what does this use variable do or this use function do and how do we, like, what are we going to do with it? Um, Brian, can you get us back to the, the, the slides so that people can see the, the list of steps? Yes, sir. Coming right up. Awesome. Uh, somebody asks, how did you create the item effect? It's fine. I haven't created the item effect script yet. I haven't written the script yet. I've just, um, I've just created the script, but I haven't actually written anything in it. Um, oh, perfect. Oh, thanks, Brian. Yeah, the sprite icon is icon potion. Perfect. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> Somebody asks, the mean hat and the speed pot don't seem to be in the the in-game item folder that you guys have. Those are the ones that I made. Yeah, those are those are. Don't worry, um, those are the ones that that I've created for this because I, you know, I went through this and and uh, pre-made the um, the uh, huh, weird. Um, I I you know I went through this and and pre-made these assets so that I would know how to do this for you guys. Um, uh, it seems like people are having trouble making the, the item effect. I'm not sure what that bug is. It's stuck on create, clicking create does nothing. Hmm. Um, maybe our moderators can, Oh, it seems like a, a bunch of people are having the same problem. Maybe our moderators can solve it. Um, I haven't seen that. So unfortunately I'm not going to be much help. Uh, Oh, it seems like if you're, huh, <clears throat> interesting. So it seems like if you're in 19.4 plus, you might have trouble creating some of these scripts. If that's the case, I would say um, just create a new script uh, in that same, in that item effects folder. Um, you know, all it's doing here is, uh, I think as long as you, here, um, let me actually, uh, let me switch to my my. Uh... Yeah, that that's the workaround. The workaround is to create the uh, right the script manually. Yeah, so so if you if you need to create the script manually, that's fine. The script is pretty simple, right? You want to make sure that you have this using creator kit code line in the in the um, library declarations up here, um, in the. I don't remember what they're called, the, the using statements. And then you want to make sure that this colon, so here we have the name of the class, uh, which I called super speed up. Um, and then this colon says it means like uh, inherits from. Um, and we want to use, you want to make sure that it inherits from usable item dot usage effect written out exactly like this. So capital U, capital I, capital U, capital E. Um, as long as you can as long as you have something like this, where it's your effect name inherits from this exact class, then it should um, it should work no problem. Like you should be able to to follow along and do this exactly the way that um, that we're going to do it. So the thing that I want to show you guys is kind of again we're not going to we're not going to get super deep into. Uh, um, how the how we write these scripts what i want to show you though is i want to show you where you can learn how to write these scripts so back in our uh back in our unity if we go to beginner code one of the things one of the options here is 
open documentation. Um, beginner code is extensively documented. So what we can do is if we open that documentation, if we click that open documentation button, what we will see is um, a screen that looks like this, right? So we're going into, it, it'll open a web browser, it should open a web browser, um, and it'll show you the Creator Kit beginner code documentation. Um, and this is, you know, this is a great, very, um, this is a very standard way for professional uh, programmers to do their work. So, you know, if you want to code something, especially if you're coding in, you know, an environment that someone else has already built, which is likely, um, hopefully they have good documentation for you and you can look through that documentation and understand kind of what, uh, what that documentation is and how it works. So if we click here on the API documentation link um, and then click on Creator Kit Code, these are all of the special functions and fields that are defined in Creator Kit Code. Um, and the specific one that I think we want to look at is we want to look at character data. So character data tells us everything about kind of a character and all of the things that, that characters, which is, again, a loose definition of like everything that's in the, the game, all the objects in the game are characters. Everything that a character could have is defined here. And the thing that we want to look at for the player is we want to look at this stat system. So it went, now we're in the class stat system, uh, handles the stats of a character. It stores the health and strength, agility, de slash defense stats. Um, it contains various functions for interacting with the stats by adding stat modifications, elemental effects, or damage. So one of the things that we can look at is, okay, well, what types of stats do players have? Like, you know, what kinds of stats can we, can we affect? And if we come down... Where is it? Um, is it under stat modifier? Yeah, I think it's under system stat modifier. Nope, it's not here. Oh, I just had it. Ah, oh, here it is. Stat system dot stats. So stat system dot stats will show us that players actually have the stats agility, defense, elemental boosts, elemental protection, health, str and strength. And those are the statistics that each player character has that we can modify using code in our different, um, you know, in our different health potions or weapons, et cetera, et cetera. They're all going to use the same system. So let's make sure that people have a chance to kind of catch up to that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I can't, and I can't emphasize the value of APIs enough or the value of documentation enough. It is yeah. like, it's like a cheat sheet for putting together the puzzle that is your game. So it's pretty amazing. Make sure yeah. you access that early and often. Often. Um, the other thing that's really nice about the, the, um, uh, the other thing that's really nice about the creator code itself the, sorry, the, um, the beginner code kit is that they have suggestions for a lot of these different documents that you can look at that are already pre-built in the, in the code. So, you know, again, this is our, this is a, just a, a real fast uh, update about how you look at that, um, right? Uh, how to look at that character data API um, so you want to go to beginner code, go to open documentation, um, and then it'll open a web browser. You'll see the documentation. You want to click that API documentation, and then you can either search for character data in the filter bar, or you can click uh, uh, create creator code uh, data and open that menu, and you'll see it in there. Um, again, we're zooming through this because we really don't have a ton of time, but what I want to show you is sort of like, so here is the basic increased strength effect. Can uh, Hopefully everyone can see my, um, yeah, okay. Everyone should be able to see my creator code. This is the increased strength effect script that is, was created already in our um, create with code. And 
don't know why I keep making that mistake. Um, in the uh, the um, beginner code, uh, like inside the project, this increased strength effect script already exists. So I, I highly encourage you guys, go check this out. Make sure that you can read through it. Make sure that you can understand it. I'm going to go over it really quickly now. Um, so we're making a public variable called duration. We're making a public variable called strength change. Uh, we're making a public sprite called the effect sprite, which is probably like, you know, like a little burst of, of particles or something. Something that says you pick this up, you, you use this effect. And then uh, here we have this, remember in our template, um, remember our template, we had this use uh, value. We had this use function. Um, here in increased strength effect, this is what that use function what looks like when it's actually been all uh, sort of like um, uh, when it's been all written out, uh, when it's been filled with with data. So we're going to use this. We're going to make a new stat modifier called modifier. Um, we're going to set the stat modifier mode to absolute. So again, if you look up stat modifier in that documentation, you'll see stat modifier or just mouse over because there are tool tips. Stat modifier has two modes, absolute where values are added as is and percentage where values are, con are converted to percentage. So we want to add absolute because we're, at, we're increasing a character's strength by five. We don't want to increase by 5%. We want to increase by five strength points. Um, and that's our, we're, we're making that um, modifier mode. Um, and then we're changing this modifier.stats.strength. We're changing that by the value of strength change. Um, one thing I want to point out is this dot notation, which is really important in functions. Basically, you know, if a class has functions inside of it, we can access those functions by using dot notation. So here what we're doing is we're looking at the modifier class we're looking at the stats. This is probably a subclass inside of modifier. And we're looking at the strengths. This is probably a sub subclass inside of modifier. Um, so that's what we're specifically going to kind of like drill down to, to change that specific thing. Then VFX manager, play VFX. This, is, this just plays a, a visual effect. Um, and I think, oh yeah. Um, and then the last, this last line is like, okay, we're going to change, we're going to add a timed modifier to this stat on the user of type modifier with the duration, duration. Uh, this is a specific, the, this um, strength add tells the, the script, if you pick up another potion, should it stack the two effects or should it, increase the length of the effect. Um, and then the last one is this effect sprite. So play the effect sprite, uh, change the modifier for this duration. Um, finally, uh, and this is in our documentation as well, this uh, Boolean variable, this, this Boolean type of the use data, this means that our, um, our function needs to return a piece of information. It needs to tell the rest of the system something specific. And in this mm -hmm. case, it's Boolean, so it's going to return either true or false. And the way that this has been set up by the designers of this, um, the creator kit, uh, we return true if we want the potion, if we want this object to basically uh, expend itself after use. And we return false if we want the object to... Um, to remain in the player's inventory after use. So in this case, we're returning true because that means that when the player uses this potion, it's going to disappear from their inventory. I want to show you guys the speed up script that I wrote. Very, very similar, right? I, I basically, I took that increased strength effect script and I'm, I modified a couple of little things to show you guys how to affect one stat versus another. So the strength script that we just went over, that affected a character strength. This, I'm using almost exactly the same, um, you know, I'm using almost exactly the same setup, but I'm changing speed instead of strength. In fact, though, I'm going to change one thing, which is instead of absolute, 
I'm going to change this character's strength based on percentage. So I'm going to increase the character's speed by a factor of 20%. Um, but again, everything else is the same. We make a new modifier. Uh, we set what the modifier mode is going to be. We determine exactly what kind of change we're going to make. And then we add that, um, we add that modifier. And then we return true, because again, that speed potion, we want the speed potion to disappear out of the player's inventory after they've used it. Okay, I'm, I apologize that we are moving so quickly through this stuff, but again, we really, um, we only have 10 more minutes and we have a whole uh, equipable item that we need to build. Um, and, you know, I'm going to, again, I'm going to zip through this, but the, the, um, the, method for creating an equipable item, it's really similar, right? We're going to, oh dear, there we go. Um, we're gonna create a new item, assets, creator kit, beginner code, prefabs, in-game item. We're gonna select from the project window, create beginner code equipment item from the context menu, and then give your asset a memorable name. Um, and again, just to show you guys what that looks like. So we're back in this in-game item. You'll see I already made a mean hat uh, and I'm going to create, in beginner code, I'm going to create an equipment item now. So remember that equipment items in this are distinct from uh, weapons. So we're not talking about a weapon. Um, instead, we're talking about probably a piece of armor. So let's call this, um, let's call this uh, repel pants. Uh, and the um, item name is going to be Enemy Repellent Pants. These are pants that will make your enemies go away. Um, again, we have that same item sprite, world object prefab uh, slot. So we do have to determine which slot is this item going to be equipped to. Right? The player has already been set up with a discrete number of slots. We want to choose which slot this object is going to go. Since they're pants, we're going to put them on the legs. Um, and then minimum stats, if you want higher level items, minimum stats are a way to gatekeep players from being able to equip something until they have stats that are high enough for them to do so. So minimum strength, minimum agility, minimum defense. And then just like we did before, we add that name effect, uh, add that new effect. So we're going to need to make an equipment effect instead of uh, an item effect this time. Uh, and again, if you're looking for a guide for how to write this stuff, please go ahead and look at that, um, you know, the look at the scripts that have already been created. So this is the stat change equip effect. Um, so let's go ahead and check out that script. So I'm going to look at scripts, equipped effect. Oh, no, these are the ones that I wrote. Um, where are the tutorial scripts? Uh, stat change equip effect. Here we go. So here is the stat change equip effect. Um, you'll notice, actually, um, I take it back. I don't want to do this script. I want to do, let's look at the... Let's look at this hat script. So this is the script that I wrote for the mean hat that I made. Um, and you'll notice we're using a lot of the same, we're using a lot of the same terminology that we did in the speed potion. We're using that same kind of terminology here in the, the hat script because we're doing the same thing. We're changing a player's stats. The, the difference is that the two, very, the two functions that we have already, we have the equipped function and we have the removed function. So in other words, we want one function to, we want to write one function that says, this is what happens when this object gets equipped. And then a second function that says, this is what happens when this object gets removed. And you'll notice, similarly, this is my defense change variable. Uh, you know, this, we have the same setup for figuring out what stat are we going to affect? I'm affecting defense instead of strength or agility here. When I equip this object, my defense changes by the value of defense change. When I remove this object, my defense changes by the value of negative defense change. Right? Does that make sense? So when I equip the hat, my defense should increase by five. When I unequip the hat, my defense should lower by five. We want to make sure 
you know, again, this is a good this is a good moment to talk about. We don't want to uh, hard code these numbers, right? Making these magic numbers is like bad coding practice because if I want to change them, I have to remember that I have to change them in multiple places, even though they're representing the same value. So that's why having them as variables makes sense because now if I decide, actually, I want this hat to increase my character's defense by 10 instead of five, I change it in one place and everywhere that defense change gets used, it gets used the same way in the script. It updates basically automatically in the rest of the script without me having to go in and do it, which, you know, can lead to errors if I forget. And if I forget and have my hat increase by five, by 10 and decrease by five, you know what's going to happen? My, my players are going to quickly figure out that if they put on the hat, take it off, and then put it back on again, they get a permanent stat boost and will just uh, happily go, you know, increasing their defense to absolute maximum by, by equipping and removing the hat over and over again, right? So we need to make sure that these numbers are the same, which means really we want them to be variables because they're going to represent that same, um, that same value. Okay, I know this was super fast. Again, I encourage you guys, uh, go ahead and, and you know watch through this. The, the equipable item and the usable item, they're very similar in process. So the equipable item, you know, we want to go ahead and create the new item in the, the project window and then create an equipped effect script, which is the same way. Go to beginner code, create that equipped effect, um, <clears throat> give the equipped effect a name and click create unless you hit that bug in which case you have to go in and uh, hand make it but again it shouldn't be too difficult um, and then we want to look at this equipped uh, function and the removed function so what happens when the object gets equipped what happens when the object gets removed uh, and this this is just again we're going to double click the script open it in your code editor uh, and the equipped effect template should already be applied um, once you've done all of that, you know, you can, you can go ahead and look at the character data again to figure out exactly how you want to tweak the character stats. Um, once you have gone through all of that, uh, go ahead and build your game, right? Get, get in there, write your scripts, figure out how you want to tool your game, um, and then you're going to go ahead and build it. And in order to build your game, you want to open that build menu. And for this project, last time we had you guys build to PC, I think, for this project, we want you to build to WebGL. So let me show you guys what that looks like. Um, so here in my uh, creator kit, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open my file menu, go to build settings. Uh, this is the creator kit um, scene, so it's already added. And these are all the platforms that I can build to. Go ahead and pick WebGL. If it isn't already selected, pick WebGL. Down here, you'll get a button that says uh, switch platforms, I think. Click that, and that will start the process of reconfiguring your project to be a web project rather than a PC project or a Mac or Linux project. One important thing about WebGL that people might run into, there is, uh, there is one setting that you might need to change. So if you go into the edit menu, go into project settings, here in other settings, look for the rendering menu, color space, Often this gets set to linear. You have to change it to gamma in order to build for WebGL. But once you do that, once you switch it to gamma, the whole project should, again, recompile, um, and you should be able to just build by pressing the build button. And again, these, that, those instructions are here. If you run into that bug, it'll tell you, like, you know, go into the project settings, go into the player settings to change the, the rendering. Um, so all you have to do is edit project settings, player settings, rendering, color space, uh, and change that value from linear to gamma. Um, and then finally, go ahead and, oh dear, uh, go ahead and upload your game, right? We are, um, there we go. Wait, nope, that's not it. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, so you will be able to upload your game to a... Oh, no. 
James, can you go ahead and um, and post the link in the? Oh, there we go. I don't know why it wasn't showing up. There we go. So, uh, you know, we've made a landing page for you to upload your game after you've had a chance to, you know, get in, build some scripts, build some new objects, play around with the functionality. Please do upload your game here. RPG WebGL. ARPG WebGL uh, is the link, and you know we'll be able to see your games and review them. And just like we did last time with the FPS Creator Kit, we're next week we're going to look at people's submissions, we're going to play them, we're going to give feedback. Um, you know, if you, I encourage you, uh, if you have um, written some clever scripts that you're proud of, um, highlight those in your submission. So when you submit, like if it lets you write notes with your submission, give us the, the script, you know, write the script or copy and paste the script so we can see it, um, so we can highlight what you think is cool about your game. Um, I wow. can't wait for that. Yeah, it's going to be super great. Again, this is getting to see your guys' work is always one of the best parts of doing these beginner sessions. It's so much fun. It's so exciting for us to get to see what people are actually making with these tools. Um, I'm sorry if we like flew through stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I apologize. Um, but we are going to stick around for a little while. We're going to answer the last of your questions. So if you have questions, please drop them in the Q&A. Um, otherwise, you know, tell us uh, what you thought of this here in the chat. Um, yeah, otherwise, uh, have a great week, everybody. Uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Um, yes, there is part three that'll be in a week, and we'll be playing people's games and giving feedback. So, you know, please don't, uh, don't hesitate to, um, uh, don't hesitate to Build your games, submit them, and then we can uh, we can see what that's gonna what that's gonna look like. Um, yeah, and do definitely join the Unity Learners Connect group uh, so that uh, we can keep in touch and you know so that you can know what um, uh, what else is things you know what uh, what other kinds of things are are gonna be out there for Unity learners. Um, in the meantime, we're going to answer some questions. Somebody asks, do you write a separate script for each item in your game? For example, 1,000 hats equal 1,000 hat scripts. That's a great question. I should have been more clear. What you are writing are not actually scripts that connect to uh, hats, to, to individual items. You're writing effect scripts. So I called this the hat script, and that was actually a misnomer on my part. What I should have called it was the increased defense script. Right? So you could have a bunch of different objects that all have you know, increased defense. You could also have like a little increased defense and a big increased defense, right? So that you could do like you know, small defense increase, medium defense increase, start uh, um, you know, large defense increase. And that would be a way to, uh, to use the same effect for multiple objects. Um, you can also add multiple effects to an object. So you could build a bunch of scripts that are like, okay, this is my small defense increase. This is my medium defense increase. This is my large defense increase. This is my small strength increase. This is my medium strength increase. This is my large strength increase. Now, you know, my low level item, my low level defensive item is going to have a, a small um, uh, defense increase, but maybe like a high level item might have like a large defense increase and a medium strength increase. Right, so that way, all of your um, all of your objects can be unique, and you don't have to write a thousand scripts for a thousand hats. Uh, do, do, do. Any other questions? Uh, how is the item object rendered? For example, how are the legs rendered in the player's legs? I'm not. I haven't dug deep enough. Um, oh, I haven't dug deep enough to uh, figure out how to to answer that question, unfortunately. But if anyone else, if any of the moderators have more information, um, they should. Somebody asked a great question. Do you cut and paste your script or save it a certain way? I'm missing the how to save and use the script step. Oh, I'm, I apologize, that's on me. So to save your script, it's easy, just control S. But to use your script, I wanna show you guys. So when you're looking at an item, this is, this is important. Um, I guess I went over it very briefly, probably too briefly. So here's my speed potion. 
right? Here's my new speed potion. In order to use the script, once you've saved your, uh, once you've saved your, um, your item effect script, your use effect script, or your equipped effect script, that will show up here. So you can see my super speed up script, even though there's nothing in there, because I saved it, it's actually part of this new effect. So I could go ahead and click it here and say, great, now my hyper speed potion has this super speed up effect on it. Description uh, plus 10 speed. Right. Um, somebody asks, what about adding variable effects? Spawn an item with add 15 to 20 defense? I, you could definitely yep. write a script where when the item is spawned, so you, what you'd want to do is in start, you'd want to create a random variable, right? Create a variable that has a random value between 15 and 20, and then apply that as the modifier later in the script. Um, what makes an enemy's material turn red when they're hidden behind an object? That's a great question. I think that has to do with the shader. Uh, so there's a there's a shader setting. I think again, I'm not much of a graphics person, so this is I'm 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 outside my lane here. But um, I think that there's a there's a property called occlusion which determines whether or not something can be seen by the camera. And if it cannot be seen by the camera, you can, you can set it so that if, if it is occluded, it should actually like, uh, be picked up by the camera and, and shaded a specific way. I think that's right, but please don't quote me on that. Can we add multiple effects to weapons? Yes, absolutely. As you can see here um, in the add new effect, I can keep adding effects to weapons. So now my super speed potion now has super speed up and speed up and uh, it has a strength effect. So be careful, but um, yeah, you, you absolutely can. Does the stat modifier change the stat by the amount defined or does it set it to the amount defined? I believe it changes it, but that's a good question. I'd have to dig deeper into the documentation to um, to make sure. Oh, somebody really helpfully answered that there's a there's a function called on invisible uh, that you can call. So so if something is not visible to the camera, on invisible you can use on invisible to affect how it's being seen. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Um. Okay, I think. That is, I wouldn't say, we certainly haven't answered everybody's questions. Uh, if there's anything else in the chat. Yeah, and again. I'm uh, just wrapping up a couple that I'm typing out. Excellent. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, given how much, given how much we went through and how quickly we did, um, don't hesitate, you know, go back uh, watch the video, slow it down. I know I can talk kind of fast uh, when I get excited. Um, so yeah, slow it down. You know, you can you can pause it so you can see each screen with its the the um, instructions. Um, Somebody asked that question about finding the pants icon. Right. No. Yeah. Well, there is a uh, Unity's got a great. You can sort. Uh, in your assets tab, you can sort by sprite, oh, and yeah. then you can find uh, the icon underscore pants, or you can just simply type it in the assets tab under the search bar. There's a little, little magnifying glass uh, right in your project tab that you can search anything, um, and it'll also allow you to categorize it. So that's pretty cool. Let's see. Where's here's the icon tonic. Uh, there's a pants. Where is it? Icon pants, right there. Yep. Um, uh, find reference and scene. No, I just want to figure out where. Oh, here we go. Uh, right on the bottom. Art, texture, UI elements. So, for example, my in-game item, my speed potion. I want to add this item sprite, and I can. Again, I can click that picker, and I can add that that icon tonic 
uh, for the speed potion. Um, okay, I think that is just about it. Hopefully we've gotten to pretty much everybody's answer or everybody's questions. Um, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what people come up with next week. Uh, that'll be the last of our beginner session uh, for the uh, for the moment. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll be back and maybe even uh, get to move a little bit further deeper into the, the, the mysteries and wonders that are Unity. I um, certainly hope so. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Have a great week again. Uh, we'll see you all next week.